Hi everyone, it's Laura Volpes for Sugar Pea Designs and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create a Halloween themed birthday card with the Monster Mash stamp set. As a first step I started working on the background. This will be the sky in my scene and I have here a piece of watercolor cardstock cut to an A2 size using the largest die in the card front element builder die set. I'm going to create a spooky sky using Nouveau Shimmer powders and the colors that I used are Storm Cloud, Lilac Waterfall and Violet Brocade. I started by dusting the shimmer powders on my sheet of cardstock and then I spritzed some water on top of it to activate the powders and let them move. I added quite a bit of water and this is why I get this soft result. I dried my first layer and then in order to get a little bit more texture and a little bit more coverage, I came in with one more layer of the same shimmer powders. This time I was a little bit more heavy handed with the powders and I added less water so that the powders didn't have as much chance to move. I dried everything again with my heat gun and then once all the water was completely gone I went in with my black suit distress ink and I blended that pretty much over the entire area focusing a little bit more on the edges in order to get a darker sky and to frame the sky a little bit too with those darker edges. I spritzed a little bit of water on top and then I added some stars with my Ganzai Tambi in the color silver. This is from the Starry Colors palette. I activated the watercolor with some water and then I used a paintbrush to create some stars on my sky background, which I then put aside to dry. I then created two hues using dyes from the Spooky Scape set and the Tree Scape set, both by Sugar Pea Designs. I die cut some black cardstock which I had previously die cut with that same stitched rectangle die that I used for the sky and then in order to add a little bit more dimension to these die cut hues I used a white pigment ink and again one of my foam blenders to add a little bit of highlights at the top of the hues and over all these elements like the trees, the tombstones and the spooky house. The result wasn't very smooth and it's okay, but I wanted a bit of a more seamless blend between the white pigment ink and the stark black cardstock. So I came in once again with my Distress Ink in black suit and I smoothed out that transition. I repeated the same process for the smaller heel too and then I moved on and started working on my images. The stamp sets that I will be using today are the Monster Mash stamp set, which is absolutely adorable. I really love this set. And then I paired it with the Balloon Numbers stamp set. This is really versatile for any type of birthday and celebration card. And then later on, I will also add one image from the Bewitched stamp set, also by Sugar Pea Designs, but I'll show that to you later. I stamped the images on Nina Solar White 110 pounds cardstock using my alcohol proof ink by Spectrum Noir. And I stamped this little balloon six times because I wanted to have enough balloons to play around with my scene and make it really nice and full and festive. And this is something that is really quick and easy to do when using a stamping tool like the Mini Misty that I'm using right now. For my coloring today I used my illustrator markers by Spectrum Noir. These are alcohol based markers so you can blend them with each other like I'm showing right now. I started by coloring this little vampire here and I used FS5, FS8 and FS9 for the skin. I then coated the skin with one layer of a warm grey marker. This is the BG2 marker so that he looks a little bit less lively so to say. And then I also deepened the shadows with my TN3 marker. For his trousers I decided to use some blue greys and I used BGR4, BGR3 and BGR1. 
I'm starting with my darkest marker and then I am blending it out towards the highlight. I'm generally using three markers per color and I'm going to list all the markers on screen. So even if I don't mention them, they will be there for your reference. And I colored most of the images as if the light was coming from the top right of the screen. Actually, I made a little bit of a mistake when coloring the fur of the werewolf, but we'll get there when the time comes. For his cape, I decided to use some purple markers and to kind of emphasize the folds or make them look like bat wings rather I should say by adding some strokes that basically start behind his arms and reach the tips of those scalloped edges on the cape or on the bat wings. I used some greens for the belt of the vampire and for the trousers of the werewolf. I used the traditional purple, green and orange color combination for Halloween, but I would not have any orange elements on these monsters because the balloons will be orange. So I wanted the colors to be balanced and this is why I stayed away from any orange elements on these characters. To shade in the fur of the werewolf, I used some green-gray markers. These are GG5, GG3 and GG1. And here is where I made a mistake in the shading of the werewolf because I shaded his trousers as if the light was coming from the top right of the screen. So in the same way that I did for the vampire, but I shaded his fur as if the light was coming from the top left of the screen. This will not matter too much on the final result because I will have the vampire on the left of the card and the werewolf on the right of the card. So if we assume that the light is coming sort of from the center of the scene in the card, these two are sort of still consistent with each other. Obviously, there is still the issue that the trousers of the werewolf are not shaded consistently with its body, but this is just something we are going to live with and it will be totally fine. Next, I wanted to show you how I added some jack-o'-lantern faces to these balloons to make them match with the Halloween theme of this birthday card. This was very simple to make. I basically drew in two triangles for the eyes, then a smiley mouth and a little rectangle for the tooth. I drew two curved lines, one on the top third of the balloon and one on the bottom third of the balloon to help me position the faces. I went in first with a pencil and then I outlined everything with a Spectrum Noir art liner. Make sure that whatever fine liner you use, it is safe with alcohol-based markers and it won't smear when you actually go ahead and start coloring the images. As you can see, I tried on a side of this piece of paper, I drew in a line and then I scribbled on top of it with my alcohol marker and it was fine. So I went ahead and drew in all the faces on the balloons. I erased the pencil lines and then I went ahead and started coloring all the balloons with orange markers. I'm going to shade them too as if the light was coming from the top right of the screen and I'm going to leave a small highlight to the right part of the balloons so that they look like they are shiny. The reason why you want to erase your pencil lines before going in with your alcohol markers is that if you don't, then you will not be able to erase the pencil lines because somehow the ink will trap the graphite, I guess, but you will actually not be able to remove them. So make sure to go ahead and do that beforehand. I colored this ghost again because in the original coloring, I again put the shading on the wrong side. So I skipped that part in the video because it would not be useful for the purposes of this card. And I'm instead showing the right shading, which is consistent with a light source coming from the top right of the screen. I did want this ghost to look white, but I wanted to add some dimension by adding shadows. And for that, I used some warm gray markers. 
As a last step, before die cutting everything with the coordinating dies, I added some shading to the mouths and the eyes of these jack-o'-lantern birthday balloons. And because I wanted these parts to look as if they were carved, I added my shading on the right side, so the darkest areas are on the right, and the shading is opposite to what I have on the balloons, because this is how hollow things look like when they're hit by light. Off camera, I went ahead and die cut all the images in these two stamp sets, and then I decided to color in this little pumpkin with the candy from the Sugar Pea Designs Bewitched stamp set. I actually will end up using three of them, so if you are following along this tutorial, go ahead, stamp and color three. For the sentiment, I did some heat embossing with wet embossing powder over the hue that will be on the foreground. The sentiment reads, have a frightfully fun birthday. And I do love making Halloween cards, but where I live, we don't really celebrate it and I don't have a lot of people to send Halloween cards to. But as I said, they are a lot of fun to create, so I thought I would actually use the sentiments in this stamp set and turn this into a birthday card that would be perfect for a boy or for somebody who was born in October or around Halloween itself. But if you preferred, there are a lot of Halloween themed sentiments in the Monster Mash stamp set, so you can switch that up and decide the theme of your card. At this point, I had everything ready and I could go ahead and start assembling the elements and building my scene. I first adhered the two hues to the sky background and then I started gluing down all the stamped and colored images using my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. I have these two balloons sort of hovering over the jack-o'-lantern with the candy because I will later on draw in some strings that look like the balloons are floating and are tied to the jack-o'-lantern itself. Before that, I added some white gel pen detail to all the images, kind of where I have the shadows so that the white gel pen would really stand out. I emphasized the highlights on the balloons too, and I also added some little strokes to this jack-o'-lantern and the candy. I used the same gel pen to draw in some strings under my balloons. These two, as I said, will be tied to the pumpkin on the ground, and this third one will be floating up in the air. And this is one of those cards where I couldn't stop. I was having so much fun and the more I added elements, the more elements I wanted to add. So I went ahead and started drawing in some stars with my white gel pen. This, by the way, is a Sakura number no. 8 jelly roll pen. I drew in some little dots and then I have these little dots with crosses around them that look like shining stars in a way. I decided to add some more balloons, one there at the center and one towards the left. Now the central part of the card felt a little bit empty, so this is when I tucked a couple more of those pumpkins with the candy from the Bewitched stamp set behind the heels. And then as a final step, I die cut some bats using the Spooky Scape die and some black cardstock. I added some shading with the same white pigment ink that I used on the heels and then some white highlight, this time with a number 5 white Sakura Jelly Roll pen and that finished off the card. And this is the final result. I really love the way this card turned out and I guess you might have been able to tell from the voiceover I really enjoyed creating it. If you did enjoy the video, you can give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section on YouTube and subscribe for more card making and paper crafting inspiration. As always, thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.